Arsenio, you are leaders out in League One as Ipswich suffer a heavy defeat to Doncaster. We'll take a look at the latest round of pictures. Of course, the results next. Number eight out of the League One, and we'll get to that in just that's right, folks. Back once again with another picture show today. We're taking a look at Master Number Eight out of League One, and we'll get to that in just one second. If you're new to the channel, smash your subscribe and hit your bang up today with all things League One related, Black and Rose related, World Football related. We got it all here. Under one Ruski, of course. Yes, big, big result for Hull as some of the chasing packs slip up, giving them an outright lead out on the table. We'll get a look at that in just a second. Of course, I want a big, big shout out to the Patreon gang. That's right, you know who you are. The VIPs from a brother, from another mother. Uh, I do appreciate the support of the channel, of course, the brand. And if anyone else is out there that wants to support the brand and the channel, there is a link down below, patreon.com forward slash overseas. Uh, for as little or as much as you like, you'll check it all out. Check it all out and support uh, the channel. That would do appreciate that. Anyway, big Shout out to, the, to those patrons. Anyway, again, be sure to bang the thumbs up, bang subscribe. Let's get into it and have a look at how we all got on. Of course, it is thick and fast these days. Games every other every other day, pretty much. Um, let's take a look at how I got on first, and then we'll take a look at how you guys got on with your pick a so Let's get into it. This is Criterion Auto 4. You're in the shit face gang. Five to nine. You're in the straight face club. And ten plus. So here we go, boys and girls. Let's take a look at how I got on then, shall we? Of course, Bristol Rovers, they did beat Shrewsbury 1-0 on the day. Brandon Hallan on score shoot Bristol Rovers. Giving them all three points. Actually, made it one nil the other way, so shame on me. Meanwhile, Pompey did beat Gillingham. Of course, I'm siding with Gillingham because of the Dominic Samuel effect, but it's gone a little bit south uh, since uh, since his opening uh, couple of goals for the club. It's all gone a bit peaked on for them. A uh, good result for them. John Marquis and Michael Jacobs. Uh, Jacobs, of course, ex Wigan man there, scoring for Pompey. 2 0 on the day, actually, with the 2 1 the other way. Accredit Stanley did beat Fleetwood 1 0. Shame on you. Uh, Joey Barton playing good football, but unfortunately on the other end of a defeat. A uh, big result that for Action Sunny. Uh, goals on the day was, uh, where are we are? Where are we? Dion De Charles on the score. Dion Charles. Di whatever his name is, Charles. He was the only one only goal scorer. Actually, went with the new new draw. So, yep, poop on me. Lincoln City, though, did beat Plymouth. That's right. Jorge jo Grant and Brennan Johnson uh, to give Luke and Town invaluable three points as they try to maintain uh, their push for promotion, of course. Oxford United, did beat Milton Keynes Dons. 3 2, 5 goal thriller there. Uh, goals on that day. Uh, who's on the goal score? Matty Taylor, Sam Long, Ole Samad Shadipo as well, with Cameron Jerome, Ben Gladwin, next rover, of course, on the score sheet there. Uh, Sunderland 2 0 winners, uh, sorry, 1 0 winners over Crew. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Luke offered with a big fat OG, giving Sunderland a monstrous win as they also try to get themselves out of the division. Actually, remember the 2 0 win myself on this one. W uh, Wigan did lose to Peterborough 1 0 on the end. Uh, Johnson, Clark, Harris with a 1 0 goal for Peterborough uh, to give themselves another win. Wigan, though, pff, I don't know what's going on with them. Of course, uh, I don't think they're going up now. I really don't I think there's going to be a season of transition for them. And maybe next year they'll be up in the discussion. So I think they just need to stick around and don't do a Bolton and don't free fall. Meanwhile, Doncaster, though, they smashed Ipswich 4-1. Uh, Joe Wright with a big fat OG giving Ipswich the lead. But then it was all uh, Doncaster with Jam J uh, Cameron John, Benjamin White, or Ben Whiteman. Ben Whiteman with a couple of goals there. And uh, Federici Okarekabagi with the other goal to give uh, Doncaster the win. Uh, uh, excuse me. Charlton won the winners over uh, Blackpool. Actually got that one bang on the nose. The new, <coughs> excuse me, I'm losing it. I'm losing my voice. Woo, I've never had this before, but uh, maybe I'm just recording too much. Anyway, Chuck Sadiq with a bonus to go for Charlton. Ben Purrington and James Husband got themselves sent off. Uh, red cards for either side there. But now I'm going against Rochdale. That ended up as a 1-0 win for Rochdale. Of course, Matthew Lund on the score sheet over Burton to give themselves a big fat three-pointer. I uh, actually went the draw on that one, so poop on me. Hull City were victorious over AFC Wimbledon. Just the one and only goal on this one. Keen Lewis Porter uh, giving uh, Hull the three points over Wimbledon. I actually went with the 2-0 win myself. And Swindon Town did lose to Northampton Town. 2-1 in the day going in favour of Northampton. Good result that for Northampton. Uh, Christopher Missaloo and Danny Rose. He scores goals at this level as well. Tyler Smith uh, getting the one and goal, sco goal for Swindon Town. As you can see, I got myself 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Once I caught a predictor alive. And it is in the shit fa uh, straight face club for me. Hull lead the charge at the moment with 18 points on the board. Two points clear of, of, of Ipswich. Lincoln Town are also 
uh, level on points with Ipswich, Peterborough not too far behind, and Sunderland, and Doncaster. This could be a very, very exciting year out in League One. It could be anybody's game. Uh, moving forward, take a look at how you uh, got on with your prediction league then, shall we? Let's get into it. Uh, Nathan Heaver, you did poop, brother. You did poop. It's all right, though. Simples did poop. STFC did all right. FC, Evil Genius did okay. Okay, did okay. We are QPR, not too bad. Kieran did poop. Victor Cavalier did all right. Ultra Omen Murat, well done to you, brother. Well done to you. Yannick Buster, you did poop. Jonathan Sandman, you did all right. Elgin Calvo, not too bad, brother. Not too bad. Of course, Emil Escovillo, the Mexican sniper, did also very, very well. Well done, well done. Finn Luke, you did all right. Brad Pepper, not too bad. Jakob Johansson, Jakobsen. You did poop. Uh, Shepard, you're not too bad, brother. Not too bad. And Russell Frost also did, did do very, very well. And Ayad Mokman Hassan did shite. Uh, and Game of Charlie did all right. So let's have a look at this week's leader, this week's champion. It's not Kieran. It's not Yannick Bustler. It's not Shepard. It's not Victor Cavallo. It is Finn and Luke and Game and Charlie. Respect him. Bow down to this week's prediction king over in League 1. League 1. Of course, Russell Frost not too bad, far behind as well. But who is your overall? Who is your real king? Who is your real? Not including me. I'm going to get my scores up today and hopefully I'll be in that discussion. I think I will be. Um, who is your real deal king or queen? Well, we're going to look at this one again, aren't we? What the? Editor, sort it out. Here it comes. Here it comes with a percentage rate. Your kingpin is... Bow down to Russell Frost. Woo! And he's a patron. Look at the patrons leading the charge. Look at that. Well done. 61% success rate out in League One. Well done, Russell Frost. Elgin Calder, hot on your heels, brother. Breathing down your neck. Jakob Jakobsen. Jakobsen. I'm getting it. I'll, I'll get it right. I'll get it right. Jakob Jakobsen, not too far by. In the top five as well. In the chasing pack. Shepard is in there. Nathan Eber just outside the top ten. And the rest of the boys. Well done, well done. Of course... It all could change right here, right now. So let's get into it. Take a look at Gillingham up against Fleetwood Town. These two sides have played each other 13 times in the past. Four wins for Gillingham, five wins for Fleetwood. And four draws the last six, though. Sees three wins for Gillingham, one win for Fleetwood. And two draws, including a draw last time pitch that was in Fleetwood. Back in December 2019, it was a 1-1 draw. That's right. Paddy Madden on the score sheet for Fleetwood. Alex Jakubicic on the score sheet for Gillingham. Uh, last time they played each other in uh, Priestfields. That one came out of nowhere. It was back in November 2018. It was a 3-0 win for Gilligan. Brandon uh, Hannon and Tom Eves with a couple of goals, of course, now at uh, Hull City. Um, uh, giving Gillingham the big fat W. Fleetwood have actually lost their last three away, away matches in League One. Uh, Gillingham have actually scored at least two goals in the last four home matches against Fleetwood in all competitions. They come into this, though. Uh, just one win in the past five, Gillingham. That was, of course, a uh, 3-1 win over Oxford. Meanwhile, just one defeat in the past four for Fleetwood. That was, of course, against Accrington Stanley. Quite recently, in fact, last time around. Bookies odds on this one, 9-5 for Gillingham, 9-4 uh, is your draw, 6-4. Is your away win on this? Of course, Gillingham, if they're victorious, they could go as high as 6th. Uh, meanwhile, Fleetwood, they could go as high as... 11th with the big fat W on this one. I I, I was going to back Gillingham before, but I think I'm going to go with Fleetwood to get a point out of this. 1-1. One, one. And yet, Accrington Stanley, of course, uh, victors uh, of a Fleetwood just the other day, taking on uh, Bristol Rovers this weekend. These two side pitch are the... Um, uh, 15 times in the past. Nine wins. That's an impressive stat. Nine wins for Accrington Stanley. Sorry. Yeah, nine wins for Accrington Stanley over Bristol Rovers. Three wins for Bristol Rovers and three draws. The last six, though, sees four wins for Accrington, nothing for Bristol Rovers, and two draws, including a draw last time they played each other back in Bristol, uh, around about this time last year, actually, September 2019. 3-3, three, three, six-goal thriller. Uh, Alex Rodman, Johnson, Clark Harris with a couple of goals. Meanwhile, Jordan Clark, uh, Dion Charles again, and Sam Finney on the score sheet for Accrington Stanley. However, last time they played each other in Accrington was also a nil-nil draw. Uh, so, two back-to-back -back draws between these two sides. Accrington actually undefeated against, uh, in the last nine matches against Bristol Rovers in all competitions. They're coming to this one uh, defeat of the past five. Uh, one, one defeat of the past five uh, for Action Stanley. They are red hot form. They were just winning them by the odd goal. They're just nicking them in the end. The, the one defeat was against Ipswich. Meanwhile, so it could be seven Bristol Rovers just one defeat of the past five as well. They did draw against Burton in amongst a, a lot of bunch of victories there. So this could be a very, very tight game on this one. Look at the odds then, shall we? 23 to 20 for Action Stanley. 11 to 5 is draw. 30 to 5 is your away win, boys. And that is, of course, Bristol Rovers. Bristol Rovers coming to this uh, in temp spot and a win for them could go as high as fifth. Action Stanley coming to this in 7th. They could go as high as 4th if they're victorious on this one. This one's tough. But I'm going to give it to Akshay Stanley to nick it. Just the one goal and the three points. Back ball up against MK Dons, of course. These two sides locking horns for what would be. What would it be? It would be the 10th uh, uh, time. The previous 9. 4 wins apiece and 2 draws. That actually equ equals 10. So I don't know what that's all about. But anyway, heading into this, the last 6. These 3 wins for Milton Keynes, 2 wins for Blackpool and 1 draw. Last night picture was that Bloomfield Road. It was a 3 win for MK Dons. Russell Martin, Jordan Houghton and David Casamu on the score sheet for MK Dons. Heading into this, MK Dons have actually failed to win the last 18 matches in League 1. West Blackpool actually lost the last 3 home matches. Heading into this, uh, just one, def one draw of the past six uh, for Blackpool. Absolutely shocking form, losing five 
uh, five games in that cluster. Meanwhile, uh, Milton Keynes not too shabby actually. Just two, just two defeats in the past five. Losing to Portsmouth and losing to Oxford. A couple of wins sandwiched in that cluster as well. Quick look at the odds then, shall we? Even steams for Blackpool eleven to four for MK Dons. Twelve to five is your draw. MK Dons coming to this in twenty second spot. So despite their good form, uh, they're in the relegation zone. Blackpool also in the relegation zone, actually, with four points of the ball. But when for either two sides, they could go as high as maybe 14th in the old table. I'm going to go with a Blackpool victory on this one. 2-1 in the end. It could it could very, uh, be a pretty much a boring draw, if I'm honest with you. And next up, Burton Albion taking on AFC Wimbledon. Of course, another interesting match. This one, 13 matches in the past. These two sides, five wins for Burton, four wins for Wimbledon, and four draws the last six, so C3 was for Burton, one win for Wimbledon, and two draws, including a draw last night picture, which was in Wimbledon. It was a 2 2 draw back in January 2020. However, last night picture in Burton was a 1 0 win back around about this time last season, actually 22nd of October 2019. David Templeton on the score sheet for Burton in a 1 0 win. Heading into this, Burton have actually kept a clean sheet in the last three matches at home against Wimbledon in all competitions. They've also failed to win uh, nine of the last 10 matches in the League One as well. Coming into this, yeah, absolutely horrific form for Burton, just one draw at the one point in the past, uh, one draw at the past. Uh, six games that's the only highlight for them including games in uh johnson's pick trophy meanwhile not, not not too much to get excited about for women and two wins in the past six in all competitions picking up a win against swindon and fleetwood as well quick look at the odds then shall we uh burton five to four for the victory 21 to 10 is your away win afc wimbledon of course uh 12 to 5 is your draw um women are coming to this 13 for the table eight points on the board win for them could mathematically go as high as eighth burton actually coming to this bottom of the table four points on the board win for them could go as high as 14th uh burton needs a result and fast and they'll get it in the shape of a point. That's right. No, no, in the end. Doncaster up against Crew this weekend. Doncaster up to six. Crew up to 14th. These two sides played each other 18 times in the past. Eight wins for Doncaster, seven wins for Crew, and three draws. The last six sees three wins for Doncaster, two wins for Crew, and one draw. Um, the last time they played each other at the keep moat. Oh, yeah. Know that, know that one. That was a 3 1 win for Doncaster back in 2017 in League Two. Connor Grant, John Marquis, and Tommy Rowe on the score sheet for Doncaster. James Jones on the score sheet for Crew in a 3 1 loss. Uh, Doncaster have actually won six of the last seven matches against Crew in all competitions at home, by the way. Um, and they head into this. Back to back wins, of course, picking up wins against Pompey and, of course, against Ipswich. Two, you know, your, your size that you would think are going to be up there. Meanwhile, Crew just one loss of the past six. That was against Sunderland last time around. They're looking good right now, form wise, across all competitions as well. Meanwhile, look at the odds on this one then, shall we? 2019, Doncaster are your favourites. Don't go favourites. 5 2 draw. 11 to 4 is your away win. Of course, Crew are coming to this uh, in. Uh, 14th, but the win for them could go as high as 11th. Doncaster coming to the 6th, and the win for them could go as high as 2nd. Oh, goodness gracious. I do like Doncaster. I think they're going to come away with a big fat W. 2 0 win in the end. Ben Whiteman on the score sheet, I say. Meanwhile, of course, leaders hold up against Peterborough. Tough one, this one. This one's a, this one's, this one's a monstrous six pointer. These two sides play each other for 11 times in the past. Four wins for Hull, five wins for Peterborough, and two draws. The last six, though, sees three wins for Hull, one win for Peterborough, and two draws. Last time played each other was at. Peterborough, I don't know what this called. Can't remember what the stadium's called. But anyway, it was a 1-0 win for Hull. Uh, that was, in fact, that was a friendly, so it doesn't really count. Last time I'm pretty sure that in competitive action, it was a 1-1 draw, again, at Peterborough. Again, don't know the stadium. However, last time I'm pretty sure that at the KCOM, uh, it was a 3-1 win for Hull. That's right, in the championship as well. Back in 2012, it was a 3-1 win. Uh, September, of course, Emil Sinclair with a hat-trick for Peterborough. Where, where's he these days? I'm going to go quickly Google him. You know, occasionally I, I get a name like that. That's just a little bit uh, interesting. Jay Shit Simpson on the score sheet for um, for Hull Sinclair. Oh, he's fallen. He's fallen down the old pitch. He's only 32 years of age. Emil Sinclair went from Peterborough with that hat trick to Barnsley, Doncaster, Crawley. Oh, he just he just free falling. That was you know, a long time ago. Anyway, I'm heading into this. Uh, Peterborough, five wins on the spin. Peter, uh, Hull just one loss at the past five as well, winning four as well. So two teams, red hot form, to be honest with you. Quick look at the odds then, shall we? Six to four for Hull. 12 to five is draw. 70 to 10 is your away. When Hull coming to the top of the pops, Peterborough could go top of the pops themselves with a big fat W. This one this is tight. Going to go with the draw myself. I can't separate two sides. Can you make sure you get predictions nice and early for this bad boy? Lincoln Town. Oh, sorry. Lincoln City up against Ipswich Town. Another crunch wash. Ipswich at second. Lincoln at third. Holy smokes, we've got a weekend on our hands. These two sides played each other 16 times in the past. Five wins for Lincoln, seven wins for Ipswich, and four draws. The last six, though, sees two wins apiece and two draws. That's that played each other. It was at Portman Road. It was back in League One, January 2020. One nil win for Ipswich. Goals on the day, or the goal on the day. Luke Wolfen done on the score sheet for Ipswich. However, last time played each other at Lincoln. It was an eight goal thriller going in favour of, of Lincoln City. 5 3 in the end. Harry Anderson on the score sheet. Tyler Walker with a couple of goals. Michael Postick and Jake. 
Uh, Hiss Keith on score sheet with Lincoln. Luke Garbutt, Harry Tafalla with a big fat OG, and Will Keane on score sheet Ipswich in an eight goal thriller. That's what we want to see. Heading into this, of course, uh, Ipswich looked good, just one defeat the past six. That was against Doncaster last time around. Same could be said for, for, for Lincoln, just one defeat the past six. That was against Bristol Rovers as well. These two sides are in the discussion for, for automatics, I would say. Bucky's odds, eight to five for Lincoln City, is 70 to 10 for Ipswich, and nine to four. A win for either of the two sides could go top of the pops, top of the pops, top of the pops. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to go with on this one. I think I'm going to go with it. So, uh, sorry, Lincoln on this one with a 2-1 win. Um, nervy, tight game. Could go either way. Hopefully it's an explosive one. Again, two uh, old school Rovers managers locking horns there with Appleton and, of course, Lambert, uh, who's going to have the, the deciding say on the day. Meanwhile, Northampton Town against a revitalised Charlton, of course, under new ownership. Uh, these two sides played each other 13 times in the past. Two wins for Northampton, six wins for Charlton, and five draws. The last uh, four uh, sees two wins for Charlton, one win for New Northampton, and one draw. Last time played each other was in Northampton. It was a 4-0 win back in March uh, 2018. 4-0 win. Ben Reeves, Tariq Fonsu Henry with a couple of goals and Josh McGuinness uh, gave Charlton the spoils there. Charlton have actually kept a clean sheet in the last three matches in League One. And like I said, they are rebooted and beaten in four for them right now in all competitions. Meanwhile, just two wins and two draws. Sorry, two wins and two defeats for Northampton in all competitions. In fact... Scrap that. They've actually just won once in the past five in the league. I'm taking out that Johnson's Pick Trophy result. I don't think it really counts. Um, anyway, heading into this, uh, 50 to 8 for Northampton, 7 to 5 is for Charlton, 12 to 5 is Jewel. That's the bookies' odds on this one. Charlton coming to this 11th. A win for them could go as high as 6th. Northampton Town, of course, coming to this on the back of a result. A win for them could go as high as 11th, maybe even above Charlton in the process. I'm going to go with a 1 0 win, though, for Charlton to take it to the bank. Oxford United up against Swindon Town. These two sides locking horns for what will be the 36th time the previous 35. 13 wins apiece and 9 draws. The last six seasons, five wins for Oxford, one win for Swindon, and no draws. Last time pictures was in Swindon. It was a 2 1 win for Oxford. Liam Sircom, Robert Hall on the score sheet. Fatanki Debo on the score sheet for Swindon Town. Uh, with Lawrence Vigarou getting himself sent off for Swindon. However, last time picture that at the K, uh, the Kazam was a 2 0 win for Oxford back in 2016 in League One. Chris McGuire with a couple of goals for Oxford. Lloyd Jones, Lawrence Vigarou getting himself sent off again. Is he still there? We're going to Google him. That's right. We're going to Google him again. We're going to Google this fella. Who is he? Who is he? Is he still there? Is he still there? Da, 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 da. No, he plays for Leighton Orient. He's a goalkeeper. Is he a goalkeeper? He's a goalkeeper. Sent off twice. Woo, woo, we will. Anyway, um, heading into this, Oxford have kept, kept a clean sheet in the last six home matches against Swindon in all competitions. And they've also won those uh, last five home matches against Swindon in all competitions. Swindon have actually lost their last four matches in League One. They're not in good form. Uh, Oxford are in okay form, picking up uh, three wins of the past five. Heading into this, quick look at the odds then, shall we? On this one, 21 to 20. Oxford are stone cold favourites. 5 to 2 is draw. 12 to 5 is your away win. That is Swindon. Swindon are actually just above the relegation zone, but a win for them could actually see them go as high as 13th. Meanwhile, their opposition, Oxford, Oxford are on the charge at the moment. They're not doing too great at the moment, uh, but they're also actually coming into this just beneath Swindon. They could also go as high as, what, 13th at the table. I'm going to go with Oxford, of course. Realistically, they're going to be up there in the end of the season. 2-1 in the end uh, at the Kazam. Meanwhile, Shrewsbury up against Rochdale. Uh, these two sides played each other 31, 30 times in the past. Eight wins for Shrewsbury, uh, 16 wins for Rochdale, and six draws. The last six, though, sees two wins for Shrewsbury, three wins for Rochdale, and one draw. Uh, last time picture was at Rochdale. It was a 1-0 win for Rochdale back in February 2020. Tyler Smith on the score sheet for Rochdale last time in Shrewsbury was a 0-0 draw back in August 2019. Uh, Shrewsbury actually failed to win the uh, nine last ten matches in League One at home. And also, however, they're also undefeated in the last five home matches against Rochdale in all competitions. They do come into this um, just one defeat the past five in all competitions. That was against uh, Bristol Rovers last time around. Uh, meanwhile, two wins and, and two defeats in the past four games in all competitions for Rochdale. So two teams, you know, not too shaky for them, not too not too bad. Anyway, uh, four to three on uh, Shrewsbury are stone cold favourites. Five to two sure. 15 to 4 is your away win. Shrewsbury coming to this uh, in 18th spot, but a win for them could go as high as 13th. Rochdale are in 17th spot, just above them. They could go as high as 11th with the W if they're victorious. Um, going to go with a draw. I can't really separate the two sides. Can you? Make sure you get your predictions in nice and early, of course, for these League One pick rooms. And, of course, there's a back two here. Sunderland against Portsmouth. Of course, these two are juggernauts, realistically, at this level. They've played each other 108 times in the past. 39 wins for Sunderland. 34 wins for Pompey. And 35 draws. The last six things. Two wins apiece and two draws cannot be separated. Last time the was at Fratton Park back in February 2020. It was a 2-0 win for Portsmouth. Christian Burgess and James Bolton on the score sheet for Pompey. Last time the at uh, the Stadium of Light was a 2-1 win for Sunderland. Jordan Willis and Chris McGuire on the score sheet. Marcus Harness on the score sheet for Portsmouth. It could go either way. Sunderland have actually kept a clean sheet in the last five matches in League One. And they're also undefeated in the last 13 matches at home. Coming into this, five wins of the past six. The only hiccup was a draw against Charlton on the road. Pompey, four wins of the past five. The only hiccup was a loss to Red Hot Doncaster. 
at the moment. Quick look at the bookies odds then, shall we? 11 to 10 for Sunderland, 40 to 5 is for Pompey, and 9 to 4 is your draw. Of course, Sunderland comes to his fifth, and a win for them could go as high as second. Portsmouth up to eighth right now. After a stodgy start, but a win for them could go as high as fifth. They could actually deep from uh, Sunderland in the process. Going to go with Sunderland just to nick it in the end. 2-1 in the end. And wrap it up. It'll be Wigan up against Plymouth. These two sides pitched the six times in the past. Four wins for Wigan, two wins for Plymouth. Um, the last time pitched there was at um, Adams Park. I think it's... Is that what they call it? Home... home uh, it's not Adams Park. It's home farm or... I don't know. Down Plymouth. Uh, anyway, uh, Wigan were victorious. 3-1 in the end. Um... William Grigg, Gavin Massey, Dan Byrne on the score sheet, Graham Carey on the score sheet for Plymouth. Uh, however, last time pitched at the other DW was a 1-0 win for Wigan. Nick Powell on the score sheet. Oh, I want to check out. Where is Will Grigg? Where is he? Is he still on Sunderland's books? Let's have a quick look at Will Grigg. I'm just Googling everybody at the moment. Will Grigg is on fire. Sunderland, yep. And I also want to look at Graham Carey. Is he still out in uh, say, uh, Bulgaria? Because he's, you know, that's a strange move. It is. CSK Sofia. Well, well, we well. So just, I'm just Googling people these days. Anyway, these two sides are heading into this. Uh, we've actually lost the last three matches in League One. They've also failed to score in those last three matches. Coming into this, four defeats on the spin in all competitions for Wigan. Last victory was against Doncaster, though, not too long ago. Of course, uh, one defeat in the past three for Plymouth. Um, winning against Burton and Northampton Town. They did lose to Lincoln not too long ago. Quick look at the odds then, shall we? On this one, 11 to 10 for Wigan. They are the favourites. 25 is drawn. 5 to 2 is your away win. Of course, Wigan come into this. In the drop zone at the moment, but a win for them could go as high as 13th. Their opposition, Plymouth, are as high as 9th, and a win for them could go as high as 5th. I'm still going to give Wigan the benefit of the doubt. 2-0 in the end to take the all three points. And if I'm right, which I bloody well hope so, this is what the table will look like. Lincoln will be your overall leaders. Hull will be dropping out down second on goal difference. Sunderland up to third. Uh, Doncaster, Ipswich and Peterborough will make up your top six. Burton, Milton Keynes and Swindon and Northampton going down as it stands. That's what I think will happen. Make sure you get your predictions in, of course, nice and early. All the prediction league, of course. Games coming thick and fast. Got another double match to, um, week next week. But until then, make sure you give the video some love and smash that thumbs up. And of course, smash your subscribe button. You bang up today with all things Blab and Rose related, League One related, World Football related. We've got it all here. Under one Ruski, of course. Uh, if you want to support the channel in another way, you can become a patron. There is a link down below, patreon.com forward slash overseas. Also, check out the old other links down there Twitch, Twitter, Facebook. We're all there, babies. So make sure you check me out on there. Very, very vocal on your Twitter. So come say hello over there. Until then, though, be sure to be safe. Mask up, six feet, all that kind of jazz. And I'll be back around for some more picks later on in the week. Till then, out skis. <laughs>